Good afternoon from Pier 66 Marina. I'm Peter Quintel with Dennis and Yachting, and today I'd like taking on board Playbook, the 2018 Ocean Alexander 70 Evolution. Come on, let's take a look. Before we get started, I'm gonna hand off to Ryan Alexander for a nice tutorial walkthrough of the vessel, and I'll circle back with you towards the end. This morning, we took Playbook offshore here in Fort Lauderdale to show you what she looks like underway and to give you an idea of how she performs. The seas were a choppy three to four feet with winds blowing around 15 knots. And while these aren't the kinds of days where you'll be dropping anchor offshore, these are more often than not the conditions you can expect when you're moving the boat up and down the Atlantic seaboard. But when it comes to days when the conditions are perfect and you want to spend some time doing what every yacht owner dreams of, this Ocean Alexander offers her new owner dynamic spaces for relaxing and enjoying time with your family and friends. This is a really popular size range as far as yachts go, and there's something special and imaginative about how Ocean Alexander has risen above the competition in this size range. They seem to really have a grasp on what today's yacht consumer wants in a boat, and they continually meet that demand. After we talk about her performance, I'll be taking you through the interior, where we'll take a look at Playbook's living spaces and the adjacent galley. And then, towards the end of today's walkthrough, I'll be showing you the four guest accommodations which are found on the lower level that consist of a full beam master and three sizable guest staterooms forward. One of the most crucial aspects of any yacht in this class is what the manufacturer does with the flybridge, and this climate-controlled feature is something that Ocean Alexander has had more success with than most. Aft is a wrapping built-in settee that is split between an open area to port and a cocktail area to starboard, with seating that surrounds the table. What's nice about this space is that the high-low table can be dropped down to convert this into a large sun pad. And another nice creature comfort found in this area is the shade that can be put into place when the sun is directly overhead and proving to be too much. Just forward of this is a full wet bar with durable countertops. Two bar stools are along the outside of this bar and are the perfect complement to a summer galley that's made up of a grill, a sink, and storage. Expanding this wet bar is a port side cabinet with a refrigerator and a separate ice maker that's hidden inside. Directly above this, we see a TV that drops down from the overhead. This split wet bar and all of its appliances rest below the cover of a molded hardtop, as does an L-shaped alfresco dinette offset to starboard. This leads forward to the best seat on board, the upper helm. Here, at what I consider to be the main helm, two stid seats face a set of Garmin electronics. The first thing that jumps out at you is how simple the layout is in terms of electronics. Built into the captain's chair are remote controls for the yacht's autopilot, as well as a Volvo IPS dynamic positioning joystick. When your captain is seated at the helm, they're just an arm's reach away from a pair of 24-inch Garmin monitors, Volvo engine controls, and a joystick that independently operates the variable speed electric bow thruster. If you aren't running the boat, chances are you're in the middle of enjoying yourself, and few places help you accomplish this, quite like the Teak Hydraulic Swim Platform found at the waterline. This platform has a lift capacity of 1,500 pounds and is where her Walker Bay tender is stored. This tender is the perfect complement to this yacht and features a 70 horsepower Evinrude outboard motor. Over on the starboard side of her Eurotransom is where her shore power hookup is located, and then turning our attention centerline in the transom is a watertight door with access into the crew quarters. Upon entering the crew area, we first see that there's a berth off to the port side of the entrance. Opposite is the crew head and shower, which doubles as a great option for your guests to shower off after getting out of the water before going inside. 
This is located just outside of the engine room, which is our next stop as we move forward. Powering this Ocean Alexander are twin Volvo IPS 1200s, each of which are 900 horsepower. Outboard of the engines are a pair of Kohler 23KW generators that power the house. Also found down here is a Sea Recovery 450 gallon per day water maker, as well as a Spot Zero reverse osmosis water filtration system. When Playbook is underway, she has a cruising speed of around 22 knots and sees reported top speeds nearing 26 knots. Pairing well with her performance is the stability added by her hydraulic zero speed fin stabilizer package. Now let's pick back up on the main deck all of the way aft in an area that you and your guests are sure to appreciate. When you access the aft deck from the salon, a floor to ceiling sliding glass door opens to reveal a comfortable layout around a centerline alfresco dinette integrated into the transom. There's also a high gloss table with plenty of seating for four chairs around the sides and the forward end. One feature I really like back here is the detachable windscreen that can be put in place to help cut down on the wind and is useful in providing some shade to the dinette. The second of three helms on board Playbook is located back here, featuring a Volvo IPS dynamic positioning docking station that makes getting this 70 footer back in the slip easy as it can be. Just inboard of this is a sink that's set into a stone countertop with a refrigerator and an ice maker below. Directly above this is a flip down TV, mirroring the one that we saw up on the flybridge. An upgraded teak deck covers the sole of this entire space and continues up to the flybridge access stairs over on the port side. If you head forward from here, you'll see that running down both sides of the yacht are side decks that lead forward and meet at the bow. The functionality of this 70s bow is as optimal as you'll find. First, you have a dinette with seating forward and aft of a high gloss table. And it's also worth noting that this area can be covered manually with an optional bimini shade. A second option for lounging is located forward of the dinette and just aft of the ground tackle at this broad sun pad. Turning our attention forward, we see that on either side of the deck anchoring system are deep lockers for storing your fenders, lines, and chain. As you can likely tell from running shots of the boat, this yacht is all about the natural light that floods inside through UV-coated enlarged whole side windows. These are the perfect representation of what the salon found on board playbook is all about. Upon entering to starboard is an L-shaped settee, and then opposite to port is a long couch running a thwartship. Either seating option offers you a great view of a TV that drops down from the ceiling electrically. Having a TV that functions this way makes for a more diverse salon and allows you to really take advantage of the windows running up and down both sides. Directly forward of the living area, we next make our way into the galley. This combined layout between the salon and galley is something that's been a huge hit with fans of this model. Appliances found in this area include a Fisher Paykel double door refrigerator, a stainless steel 30 inch Gen Air microwave directly above a cooktop and an oven. There's also a trash compactor and a Bosch dishwasher that's found in the island. Located directly across from the galley is a staircase that leads up to the flybridge. And then seen directly below this heavy duty staircase is a storage credenza with a Gen Air wine cooler built into it. Also note that these stairs are located right next to a side deck access door. This comes in especially handy for those owner operators. Forward of the galley is the interior dinette, complete with an expandable table. 
This is designed to serve as a functional space where you can gather for meals when everyone's on board. Once the table is expanded, a high gloss finish is revealed that protects the surface of the table. This brings us to the yacht's modern lower helm, overbuilt with the same navigation equipment that we found at the upper helm on the flybridge. This includes two 24-inch Garmin monitors and a black leather mechanical stid helm chair with autopilot and joystick controls built into the armrests. This is the same design that we saw up on the flybridge. Also located just an arm's reach away are the engine controls, a bow thruster joystick, and most importantly, an octoplex control that allows you to see critical ship system data and offers you control over the yacht's breakers, all found in one place. To the port side of the helm are stairs that lead down into the guest accommodations. Turning aft in the companionway, we first arrive at a convenient washer and dryer. Passing the laundry center, we make our way into the master, which is the aftmost stateroom on board. The first of four staterooms below decks is the midship master that takes up the full 18 feet 2 inches of this yacht's beam. Found in here is a forward-facing king berth with nightstands found to either side. Her walnut joinery package includes port and starboard side drawer storage below this yacht's signature hull side windows. Additional storage is found in a walk-in closet. At the foot of the berth is where we have the master's TV and entertainment center. The final aspect of the master for us to cover is the ensuite, which has his and her sinks and a large glass shower stall. Leaving here, the second guest cabin is found on the starboard side and has twin berths that are separated by a nightstand. Similar to the master, this stateroom benefits from natural light, a TV, and a plethora of storage. This stateroom has a Jack and Jill entrance into a shared guest head with a shower. Opposite the starboard cabin to port is a bunk room that works great for the crew or for the kids. This cabin features a TV, cedar-lined hanging locker, and a whole side window. The fourth and final stateroom is the VIP found forward in the bow, which has a queen-sized berth with windows to either side. This cabin features the same amenities that we've seen in all of the other accommodations, including a large ensuite. On behalf of the entire Denison team and Peter Quintel, thanks for joining us on today's walkthrough of Playbook, the 70-foot Ocean Alexander. If you'd like to see her in person, to get a spec sheet, or if you have any other questions, you can reach out to Peter at any time.